All right, hello guys, and we're back here in the earlier save, and I've just deleted the the middle section of this guy. And we've just got the sphere, and the top sphere with the move tool just brought out a little bit. I mean, so this is super easy to create. And now what I want to do is I want to separate this into two pieces. So we're just going to use split to parts. That's a little bit like extract, and it'll extract those parts to two separate objects or two separate subtools, as they're called in ZBrush. And now we can start working on either one of these by alt clicking on either object. And I'm just going to take off the background for this. So alt G just to toggle the grid off, which is just that guy there, the floor. Now there's another way that we can make this object and it's a, a lot dirtier and a lot faster than the way that we've just done it. And this is a, a common way that when you get really experienced in ZBrush, you'll be wanting to do this sort of stuff all the time. Now it's not always the best for beginners because you get lumpy models and this can be difficult when you're not used to sculpting and you sort of don't have that gift for, uh, of practice that really comes with time. So I don't necessarily encourage this with everybody. I really think that blocking out in Maya and then coming into ZBrush is one of the easiest and best ways of going. You get nice, clean, smooth models. But just when you're doing busts and things like this, this is a brilliant way of working. So what we're gonna do is select the head. So we've got the head subtool activator and we're gonna be really nasty here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some nasty ZBrush work, which actually is pretty much the fastest way to work in ZBrush, I believe. Now there's also a Z spheres which exist in, in ZBrush. Another way of working as well, which I don't really, I don't, I'm not really a massive fan of that one. I really like this way, but you can also use these spheres, but they're sort of like quasi objects. They don't give you this great form in my experience, it's much better just to insect objects together in Maya, come across and you're doing it. But this way is a really brilliant. So what we've done there is we just masked this area and then we've inverted it by control clicking. So hold control and paint and then control click in the gray and you'll be able to invert that mask selection. So this is a lot like the blue in Maya or in Mudbox, which is the freeze, if you're familiar with that. And now with just a massive brush, I'm getting the S key, tap the S key and bring that right up. And then we want to move that down. And that is it's sort of extruding, but it's doing a really rubbish thing to the mesh. So I'm going to show you another way of doing that. Just hit W and that is the move tool. And you can now just move that guy. Now, if we've snapped to that side view, even if we are in the perspective mode, this will still orthographically be sideways. Now to get that manipulator in the middle too, by the way, is always alt on the rotation tool and on that guy there. Uh, that guy's the one that moves it really. So if the manipulator's already up and down the correct way, that one's the one you want. You just move this around and we can rotate it and do different things. So we can see how easily we've created that there. But as per it would be with Maya, we've got a really rubbish mesh. So I'm just going to deselect the mask on that by control and then click dragging in that area. That's the way you delete the mask. Just if you've got anything masked, it won't dynamesh your mesh until you've got nothing masked. So there's sort of like dual functionality that control click. Now, if I do it now, because I've got the dynamesh on, it's going to dynamesh. So I'll just undo that. Let's have a look at the mesh. So this is a really awful mesh, similar to what you would get in Maya. But this is the beauty of ZBrush is that we can really now just go, I don't care, that's roughly the shape that I wanted. And we can be a lot rougher with it here. And so we're just gonna do a Dynamesh. So make sure that's on. Set your resolution roughly to 128 and we can mask that. And actually that has given us a lovely sculpt mesh. Now there's a number of ways we can smooth that out, but just for starters, why don't I take the poly polyframes off, which is the wireframe, Shift F. And now we can hit any brush, so just go back to Q is to exit that sort of mode there. And now we can hold down shift and just sort of smooth that out. And that will smooth that around like that. 